don't buy beer from gas stations. It's like buying sushi from gas stations. If your body can handle it. <laughs> It'll make you sick. 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 Bruh. <laughs> You're doing. I'm, I'm. No, I'm doing the thing. Oh. I'm what? doing. I'm doing the can. I know. But... <laughs> Welcome back, beer leavers. The Don't Stop Beer Leaving podcast. That's Michael. I'm Chris. Thanks for tuning in to episode nine of season one. Wow. Here we are. We're here. We're here. Can you? For you. Believe it. Can you beer leave it? I can beer leave it. Well, I don't can st- beer leave it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't. If you can beer leave it, why stop? <laughs> that way we have it. That, <laughs> that way you have it. Well, thanks everybody for, for tuning into the episode. We got a good one planned. Hope you enjoyed last week's episode. If you haven't had a chance, to uh, watch or listen to that yet, be sure to go check out that. We'll pop a link up here for you guys, or I don't even know where I'm going to put it. We'll pop a link up somewhere on the screen for you to go check out that episode. (laughs) I'm holding it. But this week, we are going to be talking a bit about pairing Mm -hmm. with beer, you know, uh, food Food. and beer pairings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We mentioned this last week a little bit when we talked about cooking with beer, but this is obviously a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to actually have the beer in the food, but... I guess you could and still pair it. But yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. More so just, you know, what are you going to drink a beer with? What are you going to drink certain styles with? Yeah. Um, and how does one go about finding a beer to pair with their food? Right, yeah. But as we always do, Mike, let's talk about the challenge of last week. Okay. Which was for home brewers, mm-hmm. go out and, you know, maybe start and, uh, a St. Patrick's Day beer for St. Patrick's Day. You have just enough time to do that per Mike's uh, expert knowledge. Mm-hmm. And then if you're not a home brewer, go find an Irish beer. You know, go get something that's not Guinness and, yes. uh, yeah, enjoy and drink it. it. Enjoy it. Well, I guess write it down your shopping list. Right. And get it for something. <laughs> but. No, so um, I actually had a lot of fun with this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys remember, I, I am brewing or brewed a uh, an Irish red, and the the recipe was interesting. I brewed a similar one last year, which came out perfectly great, but under carbonated and because I just didn't know how to use my my new keg system, uh, but I got some new uh, 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 O rings to hope like keep all the gas inside and make sure that everything is nice and pressurized. So we're excited for this year. But this year I did it a little differently. I focused a lot more on the um, uh, the German uh, amber uh, grains, and we're also going to be playing a little bit with not just an all grain brew. Um, so I have been moved on. I have moved on to all grain brewing, um, because my brother got me a 15 gallon stock pot, which is like this big. Yeah. It's um, huge. Yeah, it is huge. It's humongous. Um, but for a smaller batch like this, where also it's colder outside, I actually did this one on my stovetop. So I use my, my, my smaller five gallon stock pot. And because of that, I wanted to do a, um, a partial mash, which is going to be using not only the whole grains to steep, but also um, some of the extracts to just get the sugars in there without having to use all the grains. Um, so this was my first partial mash in a couple years now. And it, was, it was really nice to be inside again and having to use the extracts um, and to play, to play around with uh, my very old and awful stovetop. Um, so yeah, um, but it was, it was, it was fun to be hey, Whatever back. works, man, right? Like, exactly. You, we make it work, right, home brewers? Um, but it was a lot of fun. Right, home brewers. <laughs> Elbows. <laughs> no, but it was fun to be back in the saddle because I hadn't home brewed since, you know, the, f- the fall. Yeah, the mm-hmm. fall for my brother's wedding. Okay. So um, it was nice to be back there. And uh, if you guys are interested, I'll, I'll, I'll post my recipe down below. Um, give me your thoughts. Um, and uh, let me know if you are weirded out by one component, which I'm sure you will be, because uh, this has achieved its color by using beets. So, um, <laughs> yes, don't you just love that? Yeah, it's the great. Dwight Schrute beer. Yes, well, it's you know, Bears beats Battlestar Galactica, but Bears does not beat beer. That's the important thing to remember. Say that five times fast. Bears does not beat beer. Bears do wait, Bears beer. should not be. Beer. I can't, I can't even think about it. Well, you said it the one time, it was impressive. Did I? Bears <laughs> do not beat beer. Bears do not beat beers. Wow, wait, Bears do not beat beers. Yeah, Bears do not beat beers. Bears do not beat beers. <gasps> I did it. 
Try it yourself. Send us a video. <laughs> this is the challenge for this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let us know what you guys uh, are going to be making for St. Patrick's Day. What kind of recipe you were able to write up and, and concoct and mm-hmm. whether you've gone out and got your supplies yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you've decided not to make a beer, that's fine. What Irish beer are you going to be drinking on St. Patrick's Day? And where will you be drinking it? Let us know. Maybe we'll come hang out with you. Yeah, there Who you knows? go. Who knows? We don't have plans yet. I, well, do we? Do we? Are they in the works? <laughs> there, well, yeah. So last year we were at Guinness, mm-hmm. which is the place to be yes. for St. Patrick's. It's great. And I am leaning towards that way again. Yeah. But we'll see if we get our tickets in time. Um, but yeah. Yeah, let us know. Mm-hmm. We'd love to, to hear about it. So going into this week's topic here, Mike. Beer pairing with food. Oh, boy. What do we need to know? What a loaded topic. So last year, oh, last year, last week we were talking about um, how to cook with beer. Mm -hmm. And this should open up a lot of questions and or realizations with what you should be pairing your food with in um, in terms of beer. Or, you know, maybe think of the inverse, what you should be pairing your, your beer with. So if you go to the liquor store before you go to the grocery store for dinner that night and you realize, oh, I just got myself... Like uh, this IPA, this double dry hopped uh, IPA, shoot, like I should make something that kind of tailors to this now. You know, how are you going to develop a, a menu like that? So um, for, those of you, for those of you who don't know, Cicerone training, a huge chunk of that is pairing food and beer. And so we learn a lot about um, in our studies how to accentuate both just the beer, not only the beer, but the food. And that's the whole point about beer and food pairing is to accommodate both the beer and the food. Mm -hmm. And to do so, you either, um, you know, riff on the flavors and have them kind of talk to each other, enhance the parts that you want. Um, So uh, say for for your first course, you have a salad, right? Um, So you have like a little bit of arugula. Maybe you have some like a citrus uh, vinaigrette. Maybe some oranges on top. That's a, the traditional salad, right? You've mm-hmm. had that before. Sure. Um, maybe you pair that with an, actually a citrus IPA mm-hmm. because the the bitterness of the arugula kind of complements the hot bitterness, mm-hmm. the brightness of the um, the uh, citrus in the in the oranges might bring out the brightness of the citrus in the IPA. Very good pairing. That is a uh, kind of a riff where they're they're, they're pushing up certain components um, and they're complementing them as well. But there's also a way to contrast in a very productive way. Um, let's say, because some of the, th- the things you're doing with alcohol, some of the things you're doing with beer, is to maybe kind of cut the, the, the things you're doing in the food. Because alcohol cuts you know, sweetness, um, it cuts fat, carbonation cuts fat, cuts you know, the, 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 the heavier mouthfeels. So trying to figure out those things in each of the food and the beer and having them come together to either... Uh, complement or contrast is a lot of fun to do um, and a lot of um, interesting things can come out of it uh, one of my favorite ones is so you can you can do either of those things or you can have the the beer and the food come together and create something that doesn't even exist in the in the in the in the in either dish um, so and I think I've talked about this before but uh, one of them I had was a peanut butter stout with a raspberry chocolate cake mm. and so you're like okay that obviously makes sense you have a, a chocolate cake and a stout you just got to do two deep things but um the the beer helps cut 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 away some of that the sugar cut away some of that heavier dense feeling so honestly it's not super um i mean it is kind of um dense but it, it's not super uh coating and it's not super heavy um but the flavors you don't think about is the raspberry and the peanut butter part come together to create also like a peanut butter jelly on top mm. it's something that i don't necessarily look for when i'm having you know chocolate cake and uh, a stout but all of a sudden it comes out and you're like wait a second this this i'm experiencing this on a completely different level now because it's like having two different desserts or having two different dishes i think about the scene from ratatouille where he's <laughs> talking about the flavors you know and, he, and there's the, the cheese and the yeah, berry he's got the strawberry and the cheese and try them together and it's like a whole new world it, of, that's exactly yeah, yeah, what yeah. it is yeah. yeah because you know you, you try them apart and this is why I wanted to talk about cooking first before we talked about beer and food pairing. Because, you know, while you're cooking, while you're um, creating maybe your homebrew, you should be tasting along the way, trying to figure out, oh, you know what? Maybe I should add some salt. Or, oh, you know what? Let's mm-hmm. play a little bit more. Let's, let's add some tarragon. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, you know what? This is a little too much. You know, mm-hmm. let's, let's dilute. Let's add water. Let's add beer. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah. 
Um, it's a really interesting thing. Um, I think most people just gravitate towards a style they like to drink whenever they go out and get food or make food. Sure. It's like, I'm going to make a dish. I like drinking X. Mm-hmm. And they just get their favorite one. Um, but to your point, you can really enhance what you're eating and what you're drinking. If you just mm-hmm. think about it a little bit, it doesn't take too much effort. It doesn't. Yeah. But what about like standard you know, types of meals with the various styles. Is there a certain guidance on like what kinds of beers work well with what kinds of dishes? It, Similar to how like with wine, red wines, you know, people think Italian oh, standard. food or, or, or you right. Know, you don't do white with uh, meat, you know? Right. Or yeah. You, I mean, I know yeah. that there, and you can honestly drink whatever you want with anything, but like there are guidelines that typically yeah. people will suggest, but is there something like that for beer? Oh yeah, for sure. So, um, like you're gonna use probably maybe like a half of ice in, all the way over to like uh, maybe a pilsner when you're doing something like chicken. Okay. Um, just because like a pilsner uh, is light, refreshing, and kind of doesn't take away from anything in the chicken. Mm-hmm. Like, but also the carbonation can help, you know, cut away some of the things that's going on mm-hmm. in the meat. What you really want to look for in any type of pairing is what the spices are too. So we're talking about like the 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 main course being the chicken or the beef or the fish or the pasta but you have to remember those things are cooked around like there are things mm-hmm. around that that's mm-hmm. going to be in, uh, affecting the flavors yeah that's the part where you're trying to actually pair with the beer mm-hmm. um so you know if you're dealing with something that's high salinity like maybe do you want to lean into it and maybe mm-hmm. go with a goza i don't know it mm-hmm. depends or do you want to like pull back a little bit um, contrast with the salinity, you know, yeah. it really just depends. Um, in terms of just be all end all, like you just do this, you've heard it before. Um, dark beers are for roasts, you mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, you know, darker beers are also for, uh, for like, you know, those dense chocolate desserts, um, lighter beers, more brighter beers are going to be for earlier on the, in the, in the, in the meal, mm-hmm. but also not too bitter or else your mouth is going to be kind of affected for the second course, for the main course. Like um, that salad pairing that I gave before with the arugula and the IPA, you want to give it in such a way where you're not just going to, you know, maybe you don't do a triple IPA because then your your uh, main course is going to be affected by your current state of your mouth uh, based on the, the high hop bitterness and maybe the arugula bitterness. So it's just, it has to do with what else is going on um, in the meal, um, what else is going on um, in the dish. So Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that I did, and this obviously maybe combines a few different topics we've mentioned before, but we did um, about a year ago a Lord of the Rings watch party where we watched all three extended edition Lord of the Rings movies. That's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. The extended version. Exactly. Yeah. But we, at the same time, had themed meals and a beer pairing for the entire thing. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it was fun to be like, all right, well, because there was three factors in play, right? It wasn't just the food and the beer. It was the food, the beer, and the scene in the movie. So it was oh, like, that's okay, great. So we're going to, you know, in, in Hobbiton, and if you're not Lord of the Rings fans, this may not make sense to you, but, you know, in Hobbiton, what, what, are, the, what are the hobbits eating? What kind of, you know, hearty meals are they drinking? Potatoes. You know? Yeah, they have like <laughs> pub ales and stuff like yeah. that. So we got like a, an, an English pub ale to have with our like brunch and breakfast. And then obviously as we got through the movie, different parts, we would bring in a lager here or a stout there, depending on what we were eating. And again, what, you know, was happening in the scene because there are certain scenes you can actually drink um, very particular things that they actually are drinking in the movie. You know, very like cool. there's in the halls of Rohan, I think uh, Gimli's just like stuffing his face with <laughs> like bread and probably just some kind of lager, you know, some yeah, yeah. kind of like ale. So we were just having that, <laughs> uh, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Jeez, yeah. br- bread and beer. Just, I know. Just just, for I mean, it, you know, know. got to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and also last week I was talking about uh, how I was cooking um, and actually ended up pairing each course. So it was a lot of fun. It wasn't all beer, but for the, for the first course, um, I had did a fondue, a cheese fondue, three cheeses. It was Gouda, mm. smoked Gouda for like the, 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 kind of the character and then the Fontina. Um, and then also it was, um, Gruyere for like mm. the body. Gruyere's it was great. a fantastic. And then I actually put in some white, dry white wine to help, you know, bring that up uh, like just another notch up. And that, the pot came back clean from my friends. They, they just, they oh, scraped it you up. You gotta make that. But I paired it with 
a uh, an, uh, what was called Amber okay. by Catoctin Breeze Vineyards, and it's a mead. Oh, interesting. And I, so I started off sweet. The yeah. sweet mead, it was a lot, of, it was honey forward, um, but it also had like a dry cidery finish mm-hmm. to it. Um, fantastic. Yeah. And I'm sorry I didn't get to give you any. But <laughs> it's okay. Next time. <laughs> next year. Um, but that was a fantastic beer, uh, pairing because uh, I was using the kind of like distinct cheese flavors to be brought back by the sweetness of mm-hmm. the mead um, and the nuttiness of the fla- of the cheese was also like kind of uh, not only contrasted but that was actually riffed on by the kind of nuttiness mm-hmm. of the uh, of the amber because of that yeah t- um, those are some strong cheeses i mean they're not crazy strong but mm-hmm. i mean gruyere specifically is a pretty strong cheese fontina yeah. has its own bite so i can see that working really well mm-hmm. and then having to rein it back in yeah. with the, mm-hmm. the amber which is very nice yeah. um and actually that also had uh, i actually did a sprinkle of nutmeg on there that really nice mm. and brightened it it was fantastic dude that sounds so good i know i know i don't get <laughs> the recipes are posted on the video prior so I'll, I'll sh- uh definitely check out those yeah so you're gonna have some fun with it um but then the next d- uh, course was the osobuco mm-hmm. um which is uh braised veal shanks and for that i paired unfortunately there wasn't enough beer to share so i had beer for this course <laughs> but oh. <laughs> i i had to give wine to everyone else but this paired perfectly with a dry red mm-hmm. um that i got during my travels in france and germany last year mm-hmm. so i got to break open the cellar um but i paired it with because i uh, i actually cooked this one in a white wine um I went the opposite direction with beer to see how I could play around with it. And uh, my friend had, had gifted me a, um, oh gosh, what was it? I forget. Uh, it, it was it was a, a beer. Po- oh, yeah. Was it? I think it was. <laughs> um, it was a porter style. Okay. Um, similar to the, uh, uh, the, I think, smoked porter that we had um, for the roast last week. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't smoked this time. Mm-hmm. But it, again, perfectly... Uh, uh, complementing each other, like the flavor. You have the the deep malt backbone of the porter that's just uh, accentuating the garlic and the um, the the carrots and the celery and the onion, just to bring out those meaty flavors. Um, and it really seeped into the bone marrow, which was just like meat butter, which is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so good. And um, was really nice too is that it had. I sprinkled on a gremoulade, which mm. is uh, parsley, lemon zest, and garlic, um, which kind of lightens everything back up. Um, I think I, I think I added a little too much lemon to, to brighten it up a little bit too much. But again, that that the the having the porter to bring it right back down, perfect. That's oh, a great pairing. That's awesome. Um, and then for dessert, I made two different types of cupcakes, which was a vanilla cupcake with a standard buttercream, a more lighter one, um, with strawberries. And then a chocolate a chocolate cupcake with a raspberry filling and a raspberry buttercream, something a little bit more decadent. Um, the buttercream, honestly, I was taking my finger to it, and I was just eating the buttercream. That was a fantastic. Dude, you must have been cooking all day. I took a half day, and I started okay. at, yeah, I took okay. from one to seven I was cooking. That's awesome. So um, what did you pair with those two? Oh, and also a tiramisu pudding. Oh, my gosh. I wanted, so, so the dessert was a little a la carte. So, okay, okay, um, okay. yeah, so I wanted to give them some options. Lighter, um... Uh, and darker, and then also just tiramisu. I, I don't know about you, but that's like just a fan favorite for me of me. So I good. love tiramisu. Yeah. Um, and for that one, we were doing like a, a, a some of my deeper, darker, up to thirteen percent stouts that I still had left over from. There you go. From uh, from Germany. Um, that was a that was a good time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I bet that probably gets yeah. uh, after all those other options. <laughs> well, so remember, so uh, when, when you're when you're pairing and when you're working with alcohol, remember that sweetness is cut by alcohol. Mm-hmm. So those higher percentage beers are always a nice pairing for the highly sweet things like buttercream, um, like a mascarpone tiramisu, because it's just going to help you know uh, complement con- uh, not complement contrast those things. Um, contrast that mouthfeel, contrast that uh, sweetness. So I didn't know that. That's good to know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would never have thought that, but well, now you can think about it all you want. Know. <laughs> now I can, I can believe. I've seen it. I can believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, let's go into the challenge for next week. Yes. Uh, so the challenge for next week. Um, let's see. I'm gonna actually come up with this on the fly. Okay. Um, so we talked a lot about. Cooking with beer. We now we talked a little mm-hmm. about pairing with beer. Uh, come up with your own menu. Maybe yeah. maybe cook it. Maybe not. But come up with. Let's just start with a three course. 
develop your own beer menu or food, beer and food pairing menu um, where you're specifically coming up with food based on beers you like because that way maybe one day you can you can experience it maybe one day you can cook it and have it at home and realize there is real value in pairing your food and your beer um so you know it can be as easy as all right my my three course beer uh beer and food pairing is going to be that arugula salad with the ipa and then i'm going to do maybe a beer canned chicken um with a half of bison um and then followed by a dessert of Okay, so those were kind of like lighter things. So let's do a um, a caramel tart, uh, a salted caramel tart with uh, let's do let's do like a, 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 a well, it's leaning into the salt. I want to lean into salt for that for some reason, but I have a feeling that having like a, a salty beer like a Goza or a Lambic in general is not going to be fun as a last beer. You know, yeah. See, see how I'm, I'm already like having fun. I'm already like thinking about how this could really affect what I'm going to buy, what I'm mm-hmm. going to experience. Have some fun with it. Do mm-hmm. one of these. Come up with your own three course. Explain why you chose the foods, why you chose the beer. If you're leaning, if you're starting with beer, why you chose the foods. If you're starting with foods, why you chose the beer to pair it with. Um, it's a lot of fun, it really is. I've done this with my with my parents a whole lot. Is during uh, the, the times when I visit, usually they're already cooking dinner, and so I'm watching them cooking. I'm smelling the things that's coming off the stove, smelling the things that's 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 cooking in the oven, and so I'm I'm actually already pouring. Usually it's mixed drinks, but now I'm also like coming coming out of my cellar that I have at the house and I'm like okay what, 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 what are you playing with here tonight you know it's, it's yeah, a lot of yeah, fun yeah so totally. do one of those yeah I like that come mm-hmm. up with a menu maybe I'll go back in the in the archives see if I can find that menu we did last year and see what kind of beer pairings we oh please came up do with. and then again Michael's menu from his Valentine's Day dinner is in the description of the previous episode but we'll also link it again here below for you guys mm-hmm. um, to view and maybe get some inspiration from mm-hmm. but on that note it is time to go thanks everybody for tuning into the episode please subscribe below we appreciate all the support you can like us on facebook false and instagram as always email us at don't stop their leaving at gmail.com we'll see you guys next week cheers cheers